What if I told you that this small plastic candy dispenser could be yours for the low price of $100? You'd say I was crazy. Why would anyone pay that much for such a thing? But what if I told you that this mint condition Lego minifigure of some guy named Captain Rex could be yours for a hundred bucks? You'd think I was scamming you because there's no way anyone would be selling a real one for so cheap. What's up everyone, it's Gray and I've apparently learned a lot about economics since I started creating Lego content. I'm sure you've seen articles proclaiming Lego to be a better investment than gold, which sounds outlandish. But as I get deeper into the hobby, I'm shocked to see just how much value Lego sets, and especially Lego minifigures, can gain. Now, what even gives something like a plastic toy so much value? It's definitely not the material used to create them. There are a couple answers to this question, but the most interesting is... Memes. Memes are powerful cultural ideas that travel from person to person and carry a lot of symbolic meaning, especially within a community of devoted enthusiasts or collectors, but particularly among those that collect LEGO Star Wars. For example, why do we all love Captain Rex? He's an accomplished leader. He's smart, loyal, exceptionally proficient at destroying clinkers, and most importantly, he looks awesome. He's a lot of people's favorite clone trooper, and for good reason. Like most of you, of course I want an official LEGO Phase 2 Captain Rex. But do I want to pay close to $200 for one? No! But the fact of the matter is that many people are willing to pay that price. And I've seen it many times in auctions. Maddie's Minifigures is my favorite auction host on Whatnot. He has some absolutely epic streams with thousands of minifigures and he goes for hours. I've bought from him several times, but I gotta admit, it was a bit of a culture shock to watch figures I'd love to snag sell for hundreds of dollars. Not just Rex, but dozens of other iconic characters in LEGO minifigure form. Clone Troopers in particular are greatly desired. Phase 1 Commander Wolf, a unique and great detailed minifigure that appeared in only one set from back in 2011. What could he cost? This one just sold for 160. Hey, Max Rebo, funny looking blue dude who's banned entertain Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know what I was expecting. He was an exclusive figure in Jabba's sail barge from the set back in 2013. What about this Shadow Arf Trooper? Oh my god! This figure was only a May the 4th promotional poly bag back in 2011. All right, C-3PO, how pricey could he be? Oh. My. God. This 30th anniversary chrome gold C-3PO was randomly included in specially marked LEGO Star Wars sets back in 2007. And only 10,000 exist. To someone outside the hobby, this all must seem absolutely crazy. But it's basic supply and demand. There's low supply, very high demand, and thus high prices. But why is there so much scarcity surrounding desirable sets and figures? Because many of them retired well over 10 years ago. Pair that with minifigure exclusivity, and you get skyrocketing prices. There's a reason so many consider that time to be the golden age of LEGO Star Wars. Sure, LEGO has remade some of them, but many of our favorite vehicles and characters remain only in the past. Let's look at a set that I'd love to add to my collection. I'm a prequels kid, and I truly do love The Phantom Menace. This Gungan sub released back in 2012, and I absolutely dig the design. If you want this long retired set sealed in box, the cheapest available on Bricklink right now is $400. It originally retailed for $70. Three of the four minifigures are exclusive. The versions of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn have unique head prints with their rebreathers. It might cost you $20 to $30 each to buy, but the absolute gem of the set is Queen Amidala in her iconic red throne room gown and headpiece. If you've got to have this figure, you better be prepared to potentially pony up at least $200. Bucks. But I saw a couple listed as high as $500. Please don't pay that much. So why does her minifigure hold so much value of the set? It was the only time LEGO made this version of Padme, and I'm sure they won't ever again. It's a very iconic outfit on a beloved character that many remember fondly from their childhood. 
Strong Star Wars memes, paired with nostalgic adults with the money to obtain things they couldn't as kids, and you get a very hot secondary market. Do you remember this set? It was a decent $30 set with two exclusive figures, the Armor and Paz Vizsla. I saw it on sale for less than $25, but I never ended up picking it up before it retired in December 2022. Then, something unexpected happened four months later. Season 3, Episode 7 of The Mandalorian. At the end of the episode, Paz Vizsla stayed behind, allowing his clan to escape Moff Gideon's stormtroopers. He makes short work of them, but then is overwhelmed by Praetorian guards. He sacrificed himself and died a true Mandalorian death. Almost overnight, his desirability as a character increased exponentially, and so did his minifigure. He might have been a $10 or $12 figure before, but now $30, $40, $50, I even saw some sell for $60. How is that possible? Scarcity? Exclusivity, and of course, powerful memes. So I guess the simple short answer to why LEGO retains so much value could be because people are often willing to pay a high price to own something with renown among the community. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all this time. Big thanks to Matty for allowing me to use some footage from his auction. There's a link in the description to his Instagram if you want to check him out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any of the figures I mentioned, feel free to gloat in the comments and be sure to crush that like button. If you haven't, maybe consider subscribing. Thanks for stopping by. Take it easy.